this is where the yes. Okay, let me welcome back uh, all of you to the series of presentation that we initiated yesterday. Uh, today we have with us Parul Shukla and she would be talking to us uh, about the age of Dryden. So I invite Parul Shukla to make her presentation, please. Yes, Parul, you can begin your presentation. Okay, sir. Namaste to all of you. Today's my topic of presentation is Age of Dryden. So let us start. The period from 1660 to 1700 is known as the Age of Dryden. This age also called the Restoration Period because the King Charles II was restored to the English throne in this time. Second slide, please, sir. Yes, good. John Dryden, 1631 to 1700. John Dryden is one of the most dominant literary figures of the Restoration era. He is highly admired for his critical writings and satirical and didactic poems. He is also a great poet, playwright, translator, and literary critic. And uh, moreover, he also flourished the language into the way that the writers of English prose and words followed him. Social background. So let us talk about the social background of the age of Brighton. So first point is restoration of Anglican Church. After the restoration of Charles II, Anglican Church restored by Bishop and Book of Prayers. Second is separation of upper class into the Whigs and the Tories. And the upper class divided into the Whigs and the Tories. The Whigs attempt to limit the power of people and parliament, while the Tories favor the divine right theory of the king. Third point is secularism and politics. At that time, secularism and politics also took place in that era. Uh, what is the new philosophy? The new philosophy raised great hope and intellectual progress in the society. Then, uh, education and learning. Learning in the age of writing was general. There were no any kind of specialization. Moreover, famous universities like Oxford and uh, Cambridge refused to give admission to members of the Church of England, while charity school and the society for promoting knowledge did much to educate the poor. Uh, next is superstition. So superstitions at that time uh, began to be exposed and to be discarded. Next slide. Coffee houses and newspapers. Coffee houses and newspapers became the fashion of society in this age. People used to read uh, read newspaper and they also used to discuss about social political matters. Uh, periodicals were also begun to publish, in which the titular respectators and the citizen were the most significant periodicals. They were also a real portraiter of that, uh, that time. Next slide. Religion and morality. In religion and morality, uh, first is religious controversies. Religious controversies were more bitter at that time. The supporters of the Puritan regime were fanatically tormented. Second is preaching of George Fox. Preaching of George Fox led to literary activity. He founded the Religious Society of Friends. Uh, uh, third is Quakerism. Quakerism is a movement which took place after civil war. The Religious Society of Friends, which is founded by George Fox, also referred as Quakerist. 
the Quakers had believed that God is present in every human being, and they also played little role in movements for women's rights. Uh, next slide. Literature in the age of Brighton. Next slide, please, sir. So, literature in the age of Brighton was poetry. Uh, poetry in this age was written in formal, intellectual, and realistic form. And it focused on form rather than subject matter. Abraham Powery and Samuel Butler are most prominent of the age. Next slide, please. Second is prose. Most significant uh, prose books of the era are periodical essays, prose satire, history, biography, autobiography, diary, and etc. And most significant prose writers are Daniel Defoe, Joseph Edison, Richard Steele, Jonathan Smith, and John Bunyan. So, Daniel Defoe's word satire, he, an Englishman was not so fair for him. Joseph Edison and Richard Speer were considerably most dominant essays of this era. Their periodicals, the spectators, and the fashion brought great change in manners and the morals of the people of society. Jonathan Swift and George Bunyan wrote writing gained much of popularity in his time. Next slide, sir. Literary criticism. So, Alexander Pope and John Dryden are best literary critics of this era. Pope's critical work is an essay on criticism and many more. And Dryden's critical work is dramatic poetry. Both the work contains the critical views and thoughts uh, about criticism. Next slide, please, sir. Other contemporary poets of a book writing. So, one was man, Lord Rochester, Richard Foster, and Andrew Marvin. These are the poet, contemporary poets of that era. Next slide, slide. So here I explain, explain, I try to explain some points about Age of Brighton. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, you know, uh, Parul. Um, it was uh, a very uh, precise uh, presentation. Uh, we noted that you began with an introduction to the age of Dryden. Uh, then, of course, you followed it up with uh, the social background. You spoke about the coffee houses and the newspapers. The religion and morality was one slide that you dedicated to. And uh, what I really found interesting was when you came to the literature portion, uh, you very appropriately made the division between poetry and prose. Uh, poetry uh, you know, was, uh, again, formal, intellectual, realistic. That is something that uh, you took stock of. And then, of course, uh, we had, uh, you know, uh, prose as a form of literature, but in the development of the periodical essays is something that you deliberated on. And uh, uh, satire, again, uh, was uh, one very important uh, uh, in a manner of writing. Uh, then, of course, you followed it up with literary criticism, some of the contemporary poets, and finally you ended with a uh, quotation. So many, many congratulations, Parul. I think it was a wonderful maiden effort. Uh, you know, we are very so happy to uh, listen to you. Uh, just again, a couple of observations. You know, I thought uh, there was some correction to be made in the spelling of Defo, right? And of course, Richard. These are two that immediately came to my attention. Otherwise, on the whole, uh, Parul, you have done a wonderful job. Congratulations. Sir. 
Now, of course, uh, we have today Sonal Dudia making the presentation. I've just spoken to my e TRP, and he says that uh, you know the screen sharing facility is uh, ready. So, uh, uh, Sonal, I think you'll be able to share the screen. Uh, just hold on for his sake. Uh, okay, sir. Yeah. Sure, Sonal, you you uh, you you've been given the rights by my TRP to make the presentation. So now you could share screen, and we're all looking forward uh, to listening to your presentation. Please. Okay, sir. PPT subject is restoration clause. Okay. So in this, uh, the restoration age was an as important era in the development of English prose. It was a period when English prose it was moved from antiquity to modernity. The prose before the restoration age is characterized by word excess complexity but in prose after the restoration age was the modern qualities of clarity precious and simplicity with the development of restoration age english prose moved speedily towards being functional it cuts down all unnecessary ornaments so it also changed in government was as gr as great as the changed in literature theaters opened again the restoration of king charles ii to the english throne is in 1660 brought a new change in english literature Previously closed, theatres were opened again. New groups of writers began to write play. During the restoration period, we also noticed some um, developments in prose in John Dryden's works. The return of the re return of the age struck Charles II to power in 1660 was a major event in English theatre history. As soon the previously Puritan ban on public stages representations was lifted. The drama recreated itself quickly. The two theatres company were established, the King's and the Duke's company. The theatres also available in such facilities lifted with movable scenery and the thundering and the lightning machines. Next, critical interest. In this, the critical interest in restoration prose was shown for the first time in the history of English literature. Although critical interest in poetry was uh, popular from much earlier period, such interest in prose is visible only in uh, this period. In Restoration Age, the need for stabili stabilizing the English language was voiced by many eminent writers like uh, Dryden, the English prose written in restoration age favors clarity, simplicity, and utility against ornaments, affection, tergi, tergidity, 
it is one of the best example is the history of the royal society so the royal society established in uh, 1662 the most important of the factors for the development of restoration prose was the establishment of the royal society for the promotion of uh, experimental science it was charles the second who granted the establishing of society modern modernism modernization by popularization of literature um, modernizing influence exerted on english prose by the popular popular sorry popularizing realization of literature towards the end of um, seven se uh, 70 the expansion of the circle of readers much responsible for the simplification and stabilization of english prose the english language employed by the writers with an eye on common people was naturally simple and clear in no restoration prose writers with the exception of the works of dryden and bunyan the prose work of the restoration age is of little moment dryden's prose is almost entirely devoted to literary criticism so now these are the some of the restoration prose writers george john bunyan john Dryden, Sir William Temple, John Locke, John Dryden, sixteen thirty one to seventeen. He is a major character, major character, major writer in the Restoration prose. He is the re representative writer of the Restoration age. His most important work is the essay on. Uh, Es essay of dramatic poesy in his numerous dedication dedicatory epistles and prefaces and in stock of his surviving letters we have a prose corpse of some magnitudes john bunyan His first book Grace Abounding is a spiritual autobiography dealing with the spiritual history of his birth child and youth Sir William Temple was an example of the moneyed in literature who wrote little but elegant his chief works were his letters a series of essays and his style resembled that of uh, halifax in its prose john locke his uh, essay on the human understanding is one of the most important work of english philosophy last uh, conclusion through the prose prose writing of restoration age is not great in bulk it shows a profound change in style uh, writing style in dryden's time prose acquires a general utility and permanence it's smoothened and straightened simplified and harmonized it is it's that period when prose acquires modernity from from ancientity thank you sure thank you very much uh, sonal uh, very good very good it's a very good made an effort uh, again uh, you know uh, you you have followed the system in your presentation you began with Uh, you know restoration prose you know you're talking about 
uh, how the change in government brought about uh, a change in literature. I think that was a very significant point. Uh, you also spoke about the critical interest and uh, how uh, you know the development of science you know came about with the establishment of the Royal Society in 1662. Uh, you also spoke about modernization, uh, you know, uh, by uh, popularization of literature. Uh, you know that the, some of the terminology perhaps was uh, you, you were using it for the first time. Yes, sir. I'm quite nervous. <laughs> so uh, you know, one could see that you know, there was a little bit of novelty there. And then, of course, you took up the prose writers one by one, uh, Dryden, Banyan, Temple, and Locke. Uh, Locke, I thought, uh, you know, uh, maybe the spelling, uh, you know, you could look up once again. And finally, of okay, course, uh, the conclusion. So, uh, now again, it was a very neat presentation. All your maiden effort, uh, you know, you have been working hard. So, many, many congratulations, Sonal and uh, Parul. Uh, you know, uh, Thank I you, sir. believe both of you have, you know, put in a lot of effort. So uh, let me, uh, you know, thank you.